All right, now here, you're looking for a new crank or replacement crank or need to replace your broken crank. We're going to show you what's needed to be checked or the crucial aspects of checking a crank. And actually, even when you're just rebuilding, it doesn't hurt double checking if your crank is within spec. And plus, we will share a VW trick that we learned before that's going to help you guys scout for a better crank. And believe it or not, a crank that's within spec gives you excellent bearing clearance or oil clearances that leads you to making more power. <laughs> micrometer is your best friend here because it has an accuracy accuracy of 0 0.0001 so you know it's going to be precise we're going to show you how you measure the main journals on different axes you know because you can't just measure one side you know so it's got to be on all axes just to just to know it's full circle or the trueness of its round Okay, here we're gonna show you how we deal with the micrometer. All right, we, you, we make sure, or you should make sure you measure on all different axes of the journal, you know? So we make, this is the left and this is the right. So we just remember, it doesn't have to be, there's no specific orientation, just make sure you check on all axes, you know? And we will show you later on how we do the axis measurements, all right? Okay, here we're gonna show you. All right, okay, and then on the next axis, the the, the cross section, you know, the one that, that's across. All right, and then diagonally, just like that. And if it doesn't fit or it starts acting up, that's when you know it's not true, you know. All right, and then the opposite diagonal direction you know all right and here we're gonna show you we're gonna draw exactly how we take the measurements this way you can follow suit and actually get more consistent and know if your crank or the crank that you're trying to get is actually good and the journals are true it goes the same with the rod journals all right now here's the different axes that we measure, all right? We're gonna show you. Let's say this is the journal, okay? It's not perfectly round, but hey, it's my hands. Okay, this is axis A, all right? And then the one across is gonna be axis B, all right? And then diagonally, axis C and axis D so it's a B C D so you're actually measuring from four different directions just to know it's perfectly round all right okay now that's the perfectly round or the circumference measurement all right but you gotta understand you gotta measure at the three different points of the journal the middle here and the left and right outer just so you can see if there's such as or journal run out or inconsistency then you would know so that goes hand in hand in measuring crank journals there's no shortcut or you can't skip one step and then the other you do it because that gives you a very very dangerous understanding of the condition of your crankshaft so measure on both edges but not too much in the edge because you might start measuring the crank radius which is different a little later we're going to show you what we check on how to or how to check when there's a crack on the crank or just to be sure there's no damage and we learned it from the vw guys so let's go and inst install the bearings for now and then see how the crank is or if it's bent or something 
all right now here we're installing the main bearings we're just installing our test bearings or our mock-up bearing which is half new and half we use whatever bearing or main bearing that's left on the main caps actually it's new this one but we don't use it we just use this for mock-up check the clearances and also if the crank is bent all right there now we drop in the crank all right careful yeah all right and we like to install a used thrust washer whenever we're doing a mock-up because you need all the proper play in place you know you can't just test all of these without a thrust washer because you'd have the crank moving back and forth you know and also you'll get to check we will show you how you check the end play and if you're beyond oem specification it's just 200 pesos locally you know it's just a few dollars for a brand new thrust washer so if you're getting main bearings and rod bearings new why not the thrust washer too they're that cheap you know all right okay now we put on the main cap all right we speed it up we don't really torque this maximum just you know really snug and hand, hand tight just to so the crank is snug and not moving around you know this way we can see if it's bent or not okay now here time lapse we hand tight one two three and even four just to get the thrust washer secure all right all right now here this is an sr20 rocker arm stopper a stock one because the one that we built years ago ran a tomei version for safety so instead of throwing this we figured it might be useful one day for a bracket or something because it's steel and it does work look that's the dial gauge on the number five main near the flywheel you can see you can turn it now and you will see it's gonna be if it's bent or not and pay close attention to the dial gauge it's not really moving so when you think about it this crank is not bent and then because it's torqued by the number one two and three main and just secured on the number four you can do this the other way and to see if it's bent on the other side in here a little closer view and you can see it's not bent it's actually in pristine condition this is actually the itr crank that we plan to use on the b20 race build you know so it's gonna be really good here we show you how you can get to check the end play you can do it on the uh, other side but we'll usually check it here so that you can tap the flywheel side back and forth you know see how useful the rocker arm stoppers are okay so a little more tech now you know this is the crank right and the block as we all know, oil comes from the block onto the main bearings and it feeds through this hole, you know, okay, from the mains. And then it feeds the rod journals, you know, it oils the rod bearings, you know, so it's cross drilled in this direction, like that. So when it feeds the main bearings, it then feeds the connecting rod bearings. And that is why you can see here, it was cross-drilled when they were machining the crank. And then they plug it with a bead, you know, with a steel bead. On the VW, we remove that and actually tap it and plug it with an Allen plug after thorough cleaning. But that's because it's been rebuilt probably 50 times before we get the hold of it. So, you know, so you need to thoroughly clean it. But on the Honda, it can be cleaned quite easily and we will show you that on the next video if we get to do that for you guys 
Now going back to the main bearings and the rod bearings, notice after we explained how the oiling goes, this is why the main bearing is slightly tighter than the rod bearings itself because it needs to hold pressure. And so if you have it as loose or looser than your rod bearings, then maybe your rod bearings don't get enough oil pressure, you know, and that's that's the, that's the start of people blaming the oil pump. We never get to blame the oil pump. That's because we have the proper oil clearances. At the same time, we also always blueprint our oil pump. All right, now to the old school trick or the OG trick. You get either one of the screws or wrenches and you tap the crank. You can hear it. If it's a long ring or ding, then the forged crank is not cracked, you know, because if there's a crack or if it has a small crack, it'll just abruptly stop or end the ring, you know, it'll just be an abrupt ring or a blunt ring, you know, but this one is no crack. So may this help you guys build better engines or understand even better how it's supposed to be properly built. This is how we do it. And so for local peeps, you know, if you're in a shop or with a builder that doesn't do it this thorough, you probably get your money unsafely spent, you know, so you got to know where you're spending your money if it's your if it's wisely or unwisely because later on we plan to showcase or share uh, how you clean your certain parts before assembly even the block and we want to show you guys what everyone often misses out just because surplus is considered fresh which is kind of nonsense right surplus is already used for several years so it ain't number one so stay tuned for more we got some more good stuff